The year is 256 BC. The massive naval battle at Cape Ignomus shook both Carthaginian and Roman worlds. At the end of the day, thousands laid at the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea. Despite the human tragedy and sacrifice, the war wasn't about to meet its end. The victorious Romans and the Regulus prepared to invade Africa, and the defeated Carthaginian navy could do little to stop them. War has come to the Punic heartland. Shortly after their victory at Cape Ignomus, the surviving 15,000 legionaries and the Regulus braved the seas once again. The destination was the coastal town of Aspis in North Africa. The Roman fleet landed nearby, the legionaries disembarked and wasted no time securing the landing site. They built barricades and trenches to protect the transports and without any further delays, marched on the city. Carthage was so confident in its victory at Cape Ignomis that it didn't take the necessary precautions for the invasion. It can also be that the political situation in the Punic Senate prevented the nation from acting quick and efficiently. It is also known that the funds on their coffers were diminishing rapidly due to the massive investment in their navy. As a result, the city was poorly defended and the siege didn't last long, culminating in a quick surrender of the garrison. The Romans now had a foothold in Africa. After the capture of Addis, the fleet left for Rome and Regulus stood behind with his men to conduce the war in Africa. His next step would be to march on the city of Addis and ravage the countryside. In early 255 BC, Regulus made his move and besieged the city of Addis. The Carthaginians had recalled Hamilcar from Sicily with 5,000 infantry and 500 cavalry. Hamilcar, Hasdrubal and a third general called Bostar were placed in joint command of the army. The Carthaginians established a camp on a rocky hill near Addis. They had at their command 12,000 infantry, 4,000 cavalry and 100 war elephants. Despite having the numbers, cavalry and elephants, the Carthaginian army had just been mustered and was poorly trained and drilled. Knowing that the rough terrain would play against the deployment and use of cavalry and war elephants, Regulus was urged to act quickly before the Carthaginians came into the open plains. He audaciously divided his army in two and marched the legionaries overnight in a pincer movement around the hill. The Punic generals evacuated the elephants and cavalry anticipating an attack. They knew that the animals would be of little use in such terrain. The Romans would be attacking uphill against the Carthaginians' prepared position, but an attack from two directions would be difficult to respond to. This was a high-risk, high-reward maneuver, but Regulus was determined to see it through. At dawn, the Roman first column launched a surprise attack on the fortifications, but the Punic forces were prepared and sallied out to meet the Romans. The fight uphill was difficult for the Romans and the Punic army was easily able to withstand the Roman advance. Under the weight of an increasing Carthaginian presence, the legionaries wavered. Their countrymen on the other side of the hill didn't attack the fort and instead decided to circumvent the fortifications and rush to the aid of the other column. The first column wasn't able to bear the Carthaginian tenacity and eventually their nerve broke. The Punic forces pursued them down the hill. Once on more even terrain, the Roman reservists, the Triarii, formed up to face the approaching enemy. Many of the fleeing legionaries rallied to the call of the battle-hardened and renowned soldiers of Rome and their lines held the Carthaginian advance valiantly. Shortly after, the second column charged the bulk of the Punic forces on their rear. A generalized rout ensued on the Carthaginian side. The remaining men on the fort lost any hopes of victory. They panicked and fled without a fight. Regulus led his men into the fort and plundered it thoroughly. This defeat brought Carthage to its knees. Regulus was now able to take numerous towns, including the city of Tunis, a mere 16 kilometers away from the capital. The Romans raided and devastated the immediate area around Carthage. Many cities rebelled against their overlords. There were generalized food shortages and the refugee crisis that hit the large metropolis itself. The Punic Senate had no choice but to sue for peace. But Regulus offered such harsh terms that the Carthaginians were forced to fight on. When all seemed lost, it was in a Greek that Carthage would seek its salvation. They bought the services of the Spartan commander Xantippus, who would train and lead the Punic forces in late 255 BC. But will the Greek mercenary generals succeed in fighting the Romans? 
Stay tuned and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because we'll find out on the next episode. If you enjoyed this essay on the Punic Wars, I'm sure you'll like one of the videos on your screen right now. Stay wonderful, I've been Wolf, and I'll see you next time.